Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Harmonious at Lunch, and we're talking about food? Could there be a yeah. better episode topic? Right? Oh, man. Welcome back. Another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Excited to have you here. We're talking today about how to have a healthy relationship with food. Now, if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner and you're thinking, mm, I eat really well, I'm on a diet, I'm all of this, I'm fit. I used to think that too. And then I kind of saw the world around me have a not so healthy relationship with food. And the world around me was my family, my employees, coworkers. And I was like, huh, maybe I could help these people a little bit with what I know. So if you think you have a healthy relationship with food, first of all, fantastic. Good for you. Maybe you could still learn something, but let's teach the people around us too, because just to have a thriving self does not necessarily mean a thriving business. So we have a guest today. I'm going to welcome her on in a second here, but I, I promise you start to look at your team and your family and their relationship with food while you're listening to this episode and you might just pick up a thing or two. So before we continue, Libby, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to have you on the show. Brandon, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Yeah, this is awesome. I've already talked too much and I apologize, but this, <laughs> this topic is really, really important because it's the crossover between mind, body, and business, right? It's We have to have a healthy body and mind, but so do all of our teammates and our family in order to have a thriving business. And I'm excited that you can shed some light on what that looks like in terms of a relationship with food. But I want to clarify real quick, you are not a doctor, a nurse, a nutritionist. How do you show up in the world and teach people how to have a healthy relationship with food? Question. Um, and I like that you say that because I always stay in my scope of practice. And I know a lot of people don't out there. Anyway, so I am a licensed therapist and I have a therapy practice. I also have a coaching practice. I'm a certified intuitive eating coach. Um, so it's a separate business that I have. And I help people recover from eating disorders, disordered eating, any kind of food body angst. Um, I myself had an eating disorder for about 20 years. I really didn't think I was going to make it. And I just promised myself that if I ever get better, which I didn't think possible, then I would have to do this. So that's why I'm here. And I, but. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I, you know, I ask that, and I also say that too, about doctors and healthcare in particular, because I think, I think we tend to shy away from advice about food from those people. I know I do because I do. their first reaction is prescribe something. Yes. So what we're talking about here in, the, in today's conversation is not a diet fad. It's not a trend. It's a mindset shift. A am I wrong by saying that? Totally correct. And I like that you take the therapy approach to it. So help me understand how you do this from a, a therapy and a mindset perspective Where's, where's the real root problem when it comes to a relationship with food? Yes. Well, everyone's different. Everyone has their individual, you know, upbringings and situations and environments. But the one thing they all have and we all have is the influence from diet culture and our fat phobic society. And those are two things in why our country... Um, the world is the way it is mostly I, I think the country of you know the united states but yeah we are we are fed so much false information because it's about the bottom line which is making money and it's you know like a trillion dollar industry and uh we believe it we feel bad about ourselves and insecure and we buy it and then we you know end up on this hamster wheel of i'm the failure what's going to be the next fix it's, it's, is this one going to work this next time? And I fail again and again and again. And every time you fail, it takes a little bit of your soul and you become more insecure and just kind of this robot, if you will, of just self-deprecation and treating yourself like absolute garbage, punishing yourself all the time, 
with what you're doing to your body with eating, not eating, exercise, all of it. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely hear a, a little bit of pain in that answer. Does that is that your story? Oh, absolutely. Yes, super painful. Uh -huh. And I can tell you when I finally realized, I mean, there was so, as far as like me personally, the eating disorder I had, there was so much going on in my life as to like why I had the development of it. But I remember being in treatment when I was, you know, starting recovery. And I just remember having this like visual in my mind and like, <laughs> it was like the clouds broke apart and I could see the light and the light was, you've been fed lies your whole life. And that's why I'm here. I'm here because I've believed these lies. And it was like, oh my gosh, you're telling me that this like clean eating, this like diet life I've been living is actually what's making me sick. I mean, it was mind boggling to me when I learned that and I could actually see it. Yeah, that's, that's a major shift. And I think, I think the balance between, you know, dieting air quotes, dieting mm -hmm. and exercising and changing your lifestyle and all this stuff, it's, it goes against human nature, which is why it doesn't work long-term because in order for, I, this is what I found in business. I'm not talking about personal life, but in business, in order to really thrive and have success, you need to embrace human nature. You cannot break it or go against it. It's, it, I mean, that's, pretty much common sense. Although we don't do that most of the time, it's in theory, common sense. When you relate that to dieting, exercising, all this stuff, people go, especially this time of year, when we're recording it beginning of the year, I'm going to the gym seven days a week. I'm doing all these things. I'm changing my diet. And I, I know that the gym is going to be pretty empty in three weeks and I'm excited for right. it personally, but right. <laughs> what is the, the mindset shift that, that you really stumbled upon where you were able to then teach people this new way of, of having this healthier relationship. Yeah. I mean, I wish there was like, you only need to do these three steps. So there's, <laughs> that'd be amazing. This, there's a lot of work that goes into recovering from having an unhealthy relationship with food. And again, everyone is so different, but I think some like key, like core takeaways that, you know, anyone listening can take away from this. If you're, wondering if you have a healthy relationship with food it's okay the first thing is making sure you're eating adequately consistently and appropriately and if you're if you heard me say that and you're thinking oh i eat way too much that's not my problem it's the opposite take a closer look i guarantee you there's probably a lot of restriction going on and trying to manipulate the way you eat to eat less because you think you're eating too much which by the way makes you eat more so again, the first thing is making sure you're eating adequately. And if you don't even know where to start, there's no rules by the way, but I would say a loose guideline would be, okay, why don't we start with like three to six times a day? They could be meals, they could be snacks, they could be meals and snacks, but like just loose guidelines, like just start there. I think that's the number one thing. Um, the second thing is kind of ties into number one, but if you're somebody that is concerned with emotional eating, overeating, over consuming food, binge eating, that's actually not the problem. What you need to look at is the restriction. And the restriction comes in two forms. It comes in physical restriction, which is I'm truly not allowing myself to eat this donut or mental restriction, which is I'm eating this donut, but all I'm doing is talking crap to myself. Like you're disgusting. I can't believe you're doing this. You're going to gain weight. You're not supposed to be eating this. You need to go to the gym for longer. So look at the restriction because the restriction is what triggers the binge. The binge is a symptom of the restriction. That would be number two. And then the third thing, and the third thing and the reason I'm going to say this is the third thing is because most of the people I encounter and that I work with seriously have no idea where to start or what to eat. So three to six times a day, again, loose guidelines and when you're thinking about eating or what to fix, what to prepare, ask yourself these two questions. Close your eyes. What sounds good to eat? How is that going to feel in my body? And make your decision from there. And if it's a donut and you know it's going to feel good, right on, eat the donut. Um, so those are the three things. But one thing I want to add to that is there's nothing perfect about intuitive eating. 
So let's say this is a little example. So let's say I want to eat this donut, but I know that's not going to feel good in my body, but I'm going to choose to eat it anyways, because right now, emotionally, I really want this donut and that's okay. And that's healthy because in this moment, I'm caring more about my emotional being than my physical being. And it's okay. And I'm going to do the same thing vice versa. Sometimes I'm going to choose to eat the broccoli rather than the donut because I, I really want to feel physically good right now. Yeah, I, I like in number three, I liked the first question. I was on board and mm -hmm. then you threw the second one in there. I'm like, Libby, <laughs> I was not a fan of the second question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think um, I, in all in all transparency, I, I hate to let you down as a listener. I really do eat uh, a very boring and somewhat healthy diet. And I don't go for the donuts or the McDonald's, but it, I mean, it is what it is for you, but I think the, the biggest thing and the biggest shift for me was the difference between craving that stuff and now just like not even wanting it. Like I, exactly. cause I, I think of the second question and I'm like, if I do this, what is it going to do to me in three hours when I'm trying to get work done or when I'm on with a client or when yeah. I'm in a team meeting, am I going to feel like crap or yeah. is it going to empower me? So, um, yeah. those are, those are two very powerful questions. Yeah. And here's what I can tell listeners and you as well is, and I'm speaking for myself and all the clients I work with, when you give yourself full permission to eat all the things, you don't want all the things. Like I used to binge so much on things. First of all, I thought that I wanted, I, I first learned like, wait, you actually don't even like this. Like how interesting that you've been binging on it and telling yourself you can't have it when I actually don't like it. But I don't, like you just said, you don't really eat donuts or McDonald's. I don't either. Not That's not because I don't judge it. I don't want it. I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I don't. Really, I only think about donuts when I like talk about what I talk about. Because I think a donut is a universal, like whatever, simple. But yeah, it's it's interesting how how this work works and how your brain changes. But that I think highlights the whole point, which is why the people that join the gym on January 1st are gone by February 1st because they don't want it. They force themselves into it. And it's the same with, with eating, whatever diet you follow and diet. I don't mean, you know, fad diets. I mean like what you put in your body, right? If you don't want it, but you force yourself to do it, human nature is going to kick in eventually. Absolutely. It's the same it's with running your business. Yeah. Right. So one thing I do with my clients is we have to change our intentionality and motivators for the behaviors we do. So if you want to continue to move your body and exercise, maybe you need to take a break for a while because you're too like stuck on the correlation you have with manipulating your body with exercise. And it's like, so today my motivator is I truly want strong bones and muscles because as I age, I want to be able to like move furniture and lift boxes and pick myself up when I fall um, rather than I want to like get in this outfit this weekend. You know, <laughs> it's so different. Yeah. Yeah. It's different, different set of motivators. That's, that's really interesting. Um, so then when you're, when you're working with people, when you help them, well, I guess the first question is who, who is coming to you saying, I need extra help with this. I, I, I've obviously can't do this on my own. Maybe I failed a few times. What at what stage should people reach out to you and say, I need help and I need help from someone who's not going to tell me that I'm a fat loser? Mm. At what point do they reach out? Is yeah, like who, who is the at what stage in someone's life or or diet cycle are they yeah. reaching out to you for help? So I think there's two parts to that. So a lot of people reach out to me for help, but they're not ready to do it. Mm. Um I'll, I'll, I'll speak to the person who's ready to do it first. So the person that's ready to like, actually, I really need help and I want to get better and I want to do the work, whatever it takes is seriously the person that knows I cannot keep living like this. This is not sustainable. I'm not fully living. I'm, you know, locking myself in my apartment on the weekends because I'm binge eating or I feel bad about the way I look. I'm canceling plans. I'm not showing up to work because I binged last night and I feel so awful, or I'm just so insecure about my face today. Um, usually you have to be in a pretty, feel pretty pained to do the work. Cause it's hard. I'm not going to lie and sugarcoat it. No pun intended, but it's hard. <laughs> it's a lot of work. And it's like a lot of intentionality and like 
being really honest with yourself. Um, and then the second answer is, I, I can't tell you how many people reach out to me saying they want help, but their kind of help is just, just tell me what I need to eat to be normal. And it's like, in this DM on TikTok, I can't explain to you how that's <laughs> not part of this at all. If you want to get into a discovery call, like we can do that. But, you know, it's like, I don't know, you have to really want your brain to change, not just what you put into your body. It has to start with your mind and then you can have agency over what you eat. And I think that's why a lot of people don't change because no one's going to comment on how sexy my brain looks now that I've changed it. You got it. <laughs> exactly. No one can see like, seriously, I'm like a different person today than I used to be. I'm so yeah. much better, but no one could see that. No, unfortunately not. But it, the results do present themselves physically, especially when we're talking about nutrition and, and what you're eating. Um, so eventually we'll get there. But first, change your yeah. head. Um, so you have you actually have a uh, a free giveaway. I'm going to put it on the screen here. And I want I you to tell, tell us a little bit about it. What What is this that you have to take that first step? Yes. Okay. So this is, um, I, I believe there's three three little freebies in there. The biggest thing is I created a fee, f sorry, food freedom ebook. I want to say it's like about 25 pages long. It has prompts in it. It kind of goes through the 10 principles and in intuitive eating. Um, and I summarize the principles and journal prompts. And I think it's a really great tool. Um, the other things you get is I want to say it's about a six and a half minute video where I am truly walking you through how to eat intuitively with me eating in the video. Um, because intuitive eating, it's there's so much to it. People are like, what does it even mean? How do I start? What do I do? So I think that's a really good video to gauge and, okay, what does this actually look like in real life? And then the other freebie is it's a food check-in exercise. It's a handout and it comes with the hunger scale. You use the hunger scale to like respond to the questions in the food exercise check-in. And it's really questions that go hand in hand with the video. Um, the questions like, what sounds good to eat? How is that going to feel in my body? Where am I at on the hunger scale? What am I feeling emotionally? And just like doing that through when you're actually eating food. So yeah, those are the freebies. Yeah, that's that's awesome because, and this is why I really resonate with this um, somewhat biasly. For those of you watching, you can see behind me, there's a question mark and that's not an accident. A, that's our company logo, yes, but everything we do in terms of consulting is ask questions. We do not come in and tell you what you need to do because that goes back to everything we've covered in this episode so far. If I tell you to change and you resist the change, you will resist the change. If we can ask you questions and make your brain feed you the answers, pun intended, then you will want to adopt that change. If we say, do you want to eat McDonald's? How will that make you feel? And you say, terrible, then you probably won't eat the McDonald's. <laughs> so I, I think that is a very, very powerful technique. I encourage you to go grab those three free downloads um, and see if working with Libby is right for you. Now, I do want to end this episode by asking you now externally. So yeah. we understand what this would look like for ourselves if we struggle with this, if we have maybe a negative relationship with food and we want to correct that. In terms of our family members, our staff, our coworkers, is there is there a way that we can take that first step and maybe reach out to somebody and say, mm -hmm. you know, not from a judgmental point of view, but just saying like, you know, I see this person really harming themselves and I want to mm -hmm. help. What does mm -hmm. that look like? Okay, so here's what I, I suggest always is to make it about yourself. So if I'm reaching out to Sally because Sally really struggles with like, I, she's just always on diets and it's so hard to watch her suffer. And I just learned about this new thing called intuitive eating or I don't know, this person Libby on this podcast, whatever. I would say, Sally, okay, there's something I want to share with you. And I actually think it might be helpful because it's seriously like, I don't know, I think it's kind of a new concept or it's really whatever, whatever it is that it's done for you, just share that. And it's like really helped my brain think about food, whatever. And like, here's where I found it. Let me know what you think if you take a look at it. Mm. I, it sounds a lot better than, hey, fatty, stop eating that. Problem. Or that. <laughs> I yeah. wouldn't say that. Don't say that to anybody. <laughs> yeah, don't. Please don't. 
I mean, and, and if you truly think somebody in your life has an eating disorder and you are actually really concerned, mm. what I suggest then is to pull them aside privately, sit them down and let them know what you've seen in not a judgmental way. Like, Hey, these are some things I've noticed. I love you and care about you so much. And I just want to make sure like, are you okay? Is there something you're struggling with? I'm, yeah. I'm here to listen. Mm. And then using the power of questions too. I think if you totally. you show them that you're there for them, A, and then you ask them those questions and let them feed you the answers. That's, that's, that's a good technique. So again, yeah. I said this in the beginning of the episode, if you have, if you have coworkers, employees, family members who, who may be struggling with something like this, uh, first and foremost, go grab the free guides. You take them, go through them, see what you get from it. And then you can effectively share that information. I personally believe, and this is the I in harmonious in the acronym for those of you who are subscribers and you know this, it stands for inspire. You need to inspire your team and as a leader, your family to help them achieve the result that they want, whatever that is, professionally, personally, it is your job to build people up and support them. You're not there to dictate and tell them what to do. You have to actually build a culture that everyone thrives in not just survive. So um, Libby, I, I have to thank you. This is, it's a really, really important conversation and I'm glad we were able to have it because I don't think enough people talk about food and the relationship with food this way. Yeah. It's always telling us what to do. So um, thank you so much for coming on. Um, can we follow you on social media anywhere? Yeah, I would love for you to. Yes. So on I'm TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and I'm food freedom with Libby. And yeah, it's the same name, just Food Freedom with Libby. And I do lots on social media. So try to give lots of tips, education, advice, not advice. Yeah, tips, suggestions. Yeah. That's awesome. Don't slide into her DMs asking for the magic bullet. Just get the magic guides. And uh, those will be in the show notes. If you're not watching, you didn't see it on screen. It's in the show notes, wherever you're watching or listening. Um, Libby, thank you again. If I got nothing else from this episode, I'm going to at least share it with everyone at my gym to let them know that they don't have to be there and it can oh. go back to being empty because selfishly, I just want the gym to empty out this time of year, but <laughs> I know. all jokes aside, this is a really awesome episode and thank you again for coming and thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a minute of this ridiculous podcast where hopefully we help you grow your business with some bite-sized nuggets of wisdom at lunch. We'll see you on the next episode.